What is happening guys? My name is Jamie, this is the Norwich Reptile Shed and in this video we're going to start getting this vivarium ready to be finished. We're going to put a background in it, lighting, UVB and start looking at getting our false water cobra inside. Okay, here we go. Let's get things started or finished, whatever way you want to look at it. Um, first thing I need to address is this background. Um, it's the biggest job now. Um, you know, the electrics, the lighting, all that stuff, fairly simple stuff. So what I'm going to do with the background is fairly similar to everything I've done in the past. Uh, same technique as my actual video that I did specifically on making the background. Um, but I'm going to try and go for more like... The, the look that I did with the first two, which is the Taiwanese Beauty Snake and Mr. Pine. Um, and the, the, what I did with that was use a polyurethane varnish. Um, but to use that, I'm going to actually build the background outside of the vivarium and then put it in. Ooh, so here's the giant sheet of polystyrene. I'm making it really easy for myself. Um, just going to start with a big sheet, cut it to the right size, and then... Uh, and then not have to piece it all together uh, and do it in the vivarium. So I'm going to cut a big sheet out, do what I want to do with ledges, carving, bits like that, and then take it outside and actually uh, do the grouting um, and try and make it look more like rock. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, I suppose we need to um, take some measurements, mark this up, and get cutting. Okay, so I've got the background cut to size. Um, so this is like my blank canvas essentially, so I know what I'm working with. Um, now all I'm gonna do is kind of just eye up and, and sketch on a few like ledges, bits like that, um, and just try and make sure it doesn't look too similar to the ones that it's next to. go clear as day right let's add some pieces of polystyrene and try and get this to do something
Yeah, so the basic kind of shape's carved um, and it's all sort of stuck in place with silicon. Uh, there's one more job I can do really before the silicon has to dry and then I can put the grout on and that is I'm just going to hit it with my heat gun and that will just sort of seal the edges, round it off a little bit um, and create uh, less sort of bits. It will actually kind of remelt the surface and, and make it a little bit more uh, less messy. So uh, let's get that. Okay, so we have head out into the garden um, and as you can see I have possibly skipped a couple of steps here but um, since the last clip I have moved this shelf uh, from over here would have slightly interfered with the way I want to heat um, this snake and that is by using a, um, a dome lamp um, just to bring that heat a bit more concentrated to the floor. Um, so I've moved that over uh, which has been fine, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just a case of uh, taking the sticks out, peeling it all off in one go, sticking it back down, putting some sticks in. So that's all dried. And since then, uh, because we've had a little break in the weather outside, I've managed to kind of just give this two coats of really thin uh, tile adhesive. I'll show you the stuff I use. So I'm using the, the Mapai Fast Set Adhesive. Uh, it comes in grey. Um, and then I mix it up sort of to this that sort of texture so it's only just it's just thin and it's just painting it on and that just creates um, a couple of layers of structural kind of um, surface and then we can actually then do the finished bit which is when I use the gloves and do the t do the uh, kind of the texture and stuff like that so this is literally just a case of coating it on uh, the same way you do like a maybe with dry lock and stuff like that in the US um, but yeah, so that's that, that's all on there now. Um, now I've just got to wait for this to dry. Hopefully this afternoon I can do the final coat. So this is actually the t second coat on here. So it's gonna have three layers in total, which to me is okay for a snake. Uh, for a lizard, you'd want a lot more. Um, claws are gonna be able to dig in, things like that. But for a snake, um, the, I, you don't need as many layers. That is, that's my, that's my kind of what I've found out over the years anyway. Um, so yeah, cool. Let's, uh, we'll check back in in a bit. Okay, so while that's drying outside, I'm gonna do a couple of odd jobs in the vivarium itself. Um, and it's um, basically what I'm gonna fit right now is just some UVB lighting, and that'll just help me do what I need to do in here as well, give me some light. Um, but same as the other vivariums, the UV lighting in here is also gonna be connected to my daylight lighting um, and then that will run separately to my heating um, that means i can have different times um, and obviously then i can use a thermostat and things like that so uh, to make life simple for myself though what i normally do or what i have done in all these six foot vivariums is run the uv and the daylight lighting um, into a single plug which just helps oh my god my dog's coming oh, she never comes in um Hello. Let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at Amy. Hello, Amy. Hello. <laughs> okay, dog distraction over. Okay. <laughs> so what I need to do is, um, yeah, wire them both into the same plug top. Um, and that is what I do with all my all my other six foot vivariums. Um, and it just means I've got to put a junction box in. So I'm going to fit a junction box. I'm going to fit the UV light in. Um, in this case, this is an old lamp from um, one of my previous five foot vivariums that I used to have all stacked up in here. So I just stripped all these out. And this is the Arcadia Pro T5, the 24 watt one. Um, and it's actually got an Arcadia lamp in there as well. Uh, 6%. So... Uh, I will test that, these are old lamps, so I will test that uh, with my meter and uh, replace it if we need to. But yeah, so I'm gonna fit all this old stuff, 
managed to keep the clips, which is very important. Don't lose these. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's just screw some stuff to the uh, vivarium. Okay, so this is pretty much all dry. Um, what I'm going to do now is put the final coat on. Um, the actual texture of this is fairly similar to what we're actually going for. So um, it means that what I probably did last time was actually put it on a bit too thick, the, the, the last coat. But it doesn't matter. We've got a fresh new bag. Um, because I feel like this bag was, got, was really white. So I'm a little bit worried about this one. So I've got a fresh new bag, and I think, being as I've got some, I'm going to add some black pigment in, which was just something that I was thinking of starting to do. The only problem when I do this is I forget how much I've put in, and then it all looks, and then it ends up being two different colours if I need to mix up more. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. If it needs to be darker, we'll darken it with paint um right so we're going to mix this up we're going to make a real kind of stiff mix with this one um and then we're going to put this on with the gloves um and i'll show you how i do that uh, it's exactly the same as i did in the other detailed video but uh yeah let's mix this up and start finishing this background up So this is the consistency that I'm going for, so fairly sticky, um, if I was doing this vertically on a background that I had to stick to the Bavarian first it would then hold its shape, um, so uh, yeah, what I'm going to do now is we'll go and put it on the uh, background. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just hit it with a dry brush um, and just try and knock all the all the loose bits off. Um, you need to wait until this is fairly dry to do this. But I've got some sort of patches around here that I started first. So I'm going to try and do this and it also helps add a little bit of texture.
and there we have it guys uh, so that is that is pretty much all brushed on um, might need some uh, sort of repair Whee, there goes a the cat uh, might need some repair patches um, but I won't know that really until it's all completely dried um, but yeah I'm happy with it the textures come out nice um, yeah not too bad uh, it does it is might need a bit of repairing because I've just went to pick it up and I've cracked it because it weighs an absolute ton and it basically flexed um, so I'm not sure yeah I don't remember that on the last one but I had nowhere near as much stuff on my last one so yeah I've got to be a bit careful with that but uh, yeah should be good should be good let's uh, I'll get it in the vivarium get it glued on and we'll look at painting it and sealing it background is glued in um, it's secure so what I'm gonna do now I've got two more things left to do and that is um, give it a little bit of black paint um, and that will help uh, sort of darken it uh, fit in with the other stuff and also you'll see the the cracks and the divots and the bits like that all really like emphasize that so that'd be really cool uh, I absolutely love this step uh, and then after that, once that's dry tomorrow morning, I will varnish it and the background's done. Wave. Um, so yeah, first of all, let's uh, make up some black paint. So for the black paint, I'm using just child safe like black paint you get from any old like stationary place, B&M, whatever. Um, and I'm just mixing that with some water just to make a thick kind of watery black paint mess that I'm gonna squirt on the background but before I do that I'm gonna make sure the background's slightly damp and spray it down with some normal water as well um, and then just keep doing that process um, putting it on drying it off spraying it on until you get how you want it to look so let's do that Ugh. So that's all been sprayed up. Um, I'm quite happy with the finish. I've done a bit of dry brushing as well on some of the parts just to make them darker. Um, the light, it looks better to the natural eye actually than it does to this light, which is a bit strange. Um, but now really it's a case of waiting for this to dry. Uh, so this is the last job of the day. And uh, tomorrow morning I will uh, throw some varnish on it. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, it is the next day, everything is dry, so my one last job, and the last job in this video is going to be to put my polyurethane varnish on. Um, this is a bit of a uh, rubbish step really, because um, polyurethane is, is quite smelly, so all my windows are open, and the minute I start doing this and stop talking, I'm going to put my big extractor fan on as well. Um, yeah so uh let's get this done um and i'll check back in when um it's all over and done with
that'll do it for this video guys i really hope you enjoyed this build and check in for part two where we're going to be doing the substrate the light the heating lighting a uh, bit of planting and actually putting the snake in the vivarium if you did like this video please don't forget to give it a like hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and if you want to support the channel even further i also have youtube membership and patreon as well so thank you very much guys and i'll catch you in the next video